teams in the tunnel at Pratt & Whitney Stadium at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut, just outside of downtown Hartford. The U.S. ranked number one, Columbia ranked number 24 in the world.
These two met June 22nd last year around a 16 World Cup showdown in Edmonton. Scoreless until a red card in the 47th minute. The U.S. won it 2-0. We'll see you next at halftime. Now out to East Hartford. JP, Tony, and Kat. Thank you, Robin. We'll see that goalkeeper, Perez, who was red carded from that game. She will get the start here tonight. USA versus Colombia, the fourth time that they have met. USA have won all three of their games that have been played. Shoutouts in each. Carter Lloyd with a goal in each of those games. And Lloyd, as usual, will wear the captain's armband for the U.S. Natalia Gaetan will wear the armband for Colombia. Let's go downstairs. Jenny Taft standing by with USA head coach Jill Ellis. Thanks, JP. Well, Jill, no Alex Morgan tonight. Crystal Dunn getting the start up top. What are you looking to see from her specifically and the attacking partnerships? Well, she had a great week in practice and, you know, her versatility back to pressure running at people. So, you know, just a free role for her tonight in terms of, you know, being dangerous, making things happen. Um, you know, we're playing Haran and, and Carly underneath her. So just playing off of each other and good movement. Um, just that whole attacking group. We've done a lot and I think we're starting to come together. So hopefully some good stuff tonight, some goals. Thanks for your time. Good luck. JP? Thank you, Jen. That's Felipe Taborda, the head coach of Colombia. He's got a winning record since he's taken over as their head coach. Used to coach the under-17s a few years back. That's how he got promoted to the senior team. It's an all-Canadian officiating crew, our referee, Marie Soleil Baudin. So, they had to clear the field from snow yesterday, so the teams had to train elsewhere. Uh, the Colombian players seem to be okay with it. Some of them hadn't seen snow before, Kat. Yeah, they never seen snow. There was actually more Colombian players without sweatpants on than there yeah. were U.S. players, so that was pretty impressive. They're ready for this. They've been dying to play a game. They haven't really come together since August mm. and played in a top quality game like this. So this is a great opportunity for them to work on their team chemistry, get some young players in there, and see how they can play against the number one team in the world. They were throwing snowballs at each other, Tony. For the USA, they went from Orlando, where the temperatures were so great, to this. Well, this is New England, but what I'm interested in seeing is I thought the game against Colombia in the World Cup was the USA's worst match. And let's see if Colombia can possess the ball like, like they did in the World Cup round the 16 game, or if the USA, with their collective confidence since the World Cup, can take it to Colombia. Underway from East Hartford, Connecticut. Colombia in yellow, USA in their new, predominantly white, Nike uniforms. The U.S. men wore them in the two games against Guatemala. The women debut those new uniforms tonight with a logo change. First time in some 20 years. Haran on the ball, playing it back on the soft touch. Julie Johnston celebrating her 24th birthday today. On wide to Klingenberg. The U.S. will try to get numbers forward. Ball is picked off, and here's Columbia looking for something. They'll be looking for Usme if they can, and Rincon up top. Shot taken, though, goes wide from Catalina Usme. The series history has been dominated by the USA. They've only played three games against Columbia, though. They rarely play South American teams. Brazil will be the one that they've played the most. Sour Brun. That's Mallory Pugh. Taken off the ball. Take down there. Velasquez was fouled. One of the things that I want to focus on and for the United States to, is these pairs that they are putting all over the field. The key ones for me are Tobin Heath and Megan Klingenberg on the left side and Kelly O'Hara and Mallory Pugh on the right. They really want to see those outside backs getting into the attack. Defended there by the U.S. But Columbia back on the ball. Columbia qualified for the last two World Cups and now the last two Olympics. 
So their program is on the rise. Velasquez has it knocked out of play by Crystal Dunn. Throw in for Colombia. Six-year-old Velasquez on that throw in. On the sideline, not much room. It was cut off. Captain Cardinoy takes over, up for Crystal Dunn. Putting it to feet and space, but it's knocked out in ten of Tobin Heath. I think you saw a glimpse there of the USA potential to counterattack and how quickly they can get the ball forward. They've got some attacking personalities up top. Cut off there was Ali Long, 23, in the predominant white uniforms for the USA. Her last start for the USA was in this very stadium in 2014, 2-2 two -two draw against France. And Jill Ellis said about Ali Long, this is the fittest that she's ever seen her and that she played extremely well in preseason for Portland Thorns. So she got the call in and now she's getting a start. This is a wonderful opportunity for her to step in, in even in a new role at that more defensive midfielder area so she can try and spray the ball out wide and find Horan and Carly Lloyd through the midfield. Tony, what does she have to do to impress? Well, I think the midfield's going to take a few minutes for them to get cohesive, but she's got to be solid, tied in with the two center backs, and she's got to possess the ball specifically with change of point, some long diagonal balls. Sauerbrunn, co-captain of the team, but it's Lloyd that wears the armband when the two are on the field together. Johnston under pressure. It was knocked away. It was Usme who knocked it free, but now the U.S. recovers. Klingenberg. Ball is pushed ahead in the space. Knocked away from Heath, who's now on that left side. And back on the left side. The foul is given. USA will have a free kick. And of course, anytime USA gets a set piece, it's going to be dangerous. Look for Horan and Lloyd to get on the end of service. They fooled us there. Short and quick. From wide. And now the end line, but it's going to be blocked. And a nice sweet move in front. Loose for Dunn. Cleared off the line and stopped by Perez. Velasquez appeared to be the one that saved the goal. Well, this is Tobin Heath magic. It looks like she's going to lose the ball, but she's still able to beat three and four Columbia defenders, and she's finding the open player. Comes right to Crystal Dunn, and Velasquez makes an excellent stop for Columbia. Good defending, but Crystal Dunn does have to put that away. And lately, it's not been a problem for her with 11 goals in the last 12 games. Had that five-goal game against Puerto Rico. But that was some magic by Tobin Heath with a little nutmeg on that last defender. Velasquez plays it back. Halfway line area. U.S. won it with Long. Horan. Heath. Crystal Dunn leads it to the right. Off Pew? No, it's off Columbia. So it'll be a throw in here for the U.S. Mallory Pew. She'll get the return. O'Hara into the middle. Ali Long given away, and here's Columbia. Towards his left flank, Santos push forward, nobody there in the yellow of Colombia. And that right there in that attack was the development. It was the development in the attack that they still have to get used to it for the U.S. That Tobin Heath thought Ali Long was going to keep making the run and Ali Long dropped back. Maybe Tobin Heath take an extra touch and find the player out wide. Now one thing I do like, Kat, is those three up front, they interchange positions. It's very difficult for them to, uh, the defense, to get a hold of where those runs are coming from. Columbia love to throw it, but closer to the halfway line. Seventh minute, scoreless. USA and Columbia, first of two meetings this week. 
We'll finish up Sunday at Talon Energy Stadium outside of Philadelphia in Chester, Pennsylvania. Play back to goal. Hope Solo sends this one out of play. Throw in for Columbia. Solo's 194th cap for the USA. 97 shutouts. Setting all kinds of records for USA goalkeepers. Adding to our own records now. Horan, but there was a foul before that. Great opportunity for the U.S. to score early. Crystal Dunn had the best chance. And she did, and it's interesting. Tobin Heath with the nutmeg, but was this a handball on Velasquez? It's hard to tell. It was such an excellent save. She made her body big. Might have been a handball. That would have been yeah, tough. Difficult call from that angle. Columbia back on the ball. Rincon. And the ball is given away again to the USA. Good defending there by Ali Hong. Sitting deep to allow Lloyd and Horan to go forward. Here's Carly Lloyd. Done. 22 yards away. Pushing it back out. Hard challenge. Puts two players down. And neither are getting up. Ball out. And play is stopped. It was Horan who went down. It's one of the players in, in a spina guy. Is it? She appears to be the one more seriously injured. Yeah, it was kind of a mistouch by Lindsay Horan, and then the spina came in for the tackle collision. Those hurt, especially on a cold day. Deanna Espina is still down. She was one of the players that started every game at the Women's World Cup, Ospina. This will be tough for Colombia if they have to replace one of the better players, especially this early in the game. How about the start so far at Cap for the U.S.? Well, it's been good. They've found some pockets in between the back line and the midfield of Columbia. Carly Lloyd and Lindsey Horan have been in there nicely. He's still just finding that chemistry between in those front six and finding the players out wide and knowing when to go into the holes and finding a Crystal Dunn and Tobin Heath and Mallory Pugh. They just haven't gotten touches in the most dangerous positions quite yet, but they're figuring it out and they're making their smart runs. You like the start, Tony, or no? Yeah, I, I think they need to be a little bit more patient. I like the energy that the U.S. is bringing. I actually like the energy that the Columbia is bringing, too. The U.S. has to be a little bit more patient in possession. And you got to like Colombians' arrogance on the ball. They think they can hold the ball, and you don't want to let them get a rhythm in possession. A lot of opponents, there's a stigma with the United States. They're a bit intimidated. Colombia, they don't seem that way. They said their best match in the World Cup was against the United States. Cross from O'Hara, denied. Here's Velasquez by the corner flag, knocking it out. Throw in USA. Spina is back on the field. The Sauerbrunn pass almost got that one through to Mallory Pugh. Instead, Columbia will recover in front of their coach. He had a good view of it. Throw in here for the U.S. From O'Hara. Off done. O'Hara gets it back. Sixth start in the last seven games now for Kelly O'Hara. In a battle, it seems, with Ali Krieger for that starting right back spot. Nice cut inside again. Heath once again. Laying it off. Lloyd done. Long off the crossbar. Goal kick. Another close call. Well, that's what you want from your holding midfielder. Just kind of step up when balls are in that part of the field and rocket them. And this one was a tough one because it, it beat the goalkeeper but didn't beat the post. Hit it with authority. Ellie Long scored 10 goals last year in the NWSL for Portland. So always a threat to score. And that's from a midfield position. 
Uh, Portland, she typically plays in that attacking midfielder role. Here, she's dropped back a little bit, and so far, she looks extremely comfortable in that lower role for the U.S. And she knows that she has to learn that position. She's taken it on. I've spoken to her a couple times uh, over the last three or four months, and I just said, be ready. I said, hound Joe Ellis, which she has, and be ready if you get a call up. It looks like she is. Santos on the side, 16 in the yellow of Columbia. Ball was lost out. Last touch by the U.S. Velasquez will have a throw in. Walks it on the left foot to try to cross it. She might get a corner out of this. Nope, throw in. Throw in. Now she's going to get a corner out of it. First corner for Colombia. There's an obvious disadvantage for Colombia on these corner kicks. With how good they are individually, I would like for them to try to do two people on the ball, but it looks like they're going for it against the United States in their height. I'm a little surprised that the U.S. doesn't have at least one player high against Colombia because I agree with you, Cap. It went near a post. It was knocked away. Hugh was after it. She had gotten the first touch. Heath moving it ahead. Crystal Dunn. Had she been able to get by Ospina? She had that whole sideline. Ospina would be well to cut her off. Well, that's some of the maturity that you have to see from Crystal Dunn just to hold the ball there and link up and maybe, maybe make a pass and then run to get in. Sauerbrunn. Pugh. With that touch, it goes out for a throw in for Colombia. You join us late, USA playing without the injured Alex Morgan and also Morgan Bryan, two starters, not deemed to have serious injuries. One or both could play on Sunday, but not even suited up for tonight. Pugh. O'Hara. Headed for Dunn. It'll be a USA throw in. O'Hara goes toward the middle. Tender for long. Possession lost. Rincon's after it. A fight for the ball. Columbia got it, but the foul was drawn by Ali Long. Well, Columbia's weathered the early storm for the USA. And now the USA has to kind of impose their game on Colombia. Do not let them get too confident. Heath. Ball's blasted out of play for USA throw in deep. Very active first 15 minutes for Tobin Heath. One in the air by Colombia. Second ball cleared away. O'Hara has to chase it down in the USA half. Sauerbrunn. Horan. Across the way to Julie Johnston. Ali Long drifting back for it. Upfield comes Sauerbrunn. Pressure on Pew, back for Sauerbrunn. We talked about Colombia and their confidence and they've weathered the storm. One of the things that Natalia Gaetan talked about was they need to play with what they have because they don't have every player like Lady Andrade from the World Cup this past summer and they need to avoid the big balls. They've avoided that so far and a lot of that has to do with this higher pressure, even though it may not seem high to the U.S., but it's high for Colombia against the two center backs of the United States. Rincon. Did well there, drew the foul in the end. Did well to keep the ball initially. Also better by the USA. That was a good series of possession, a little bit more patient. Just didn't make the connection in the attacking third.
free kick here for Colombia. Rob Stone mentioned in the pregame that they've not played since July. The U.S. has played 18 games since then. That's tough for Colombia to try to get into a rhythm. They're training more, at least, these days. But they need more games, and that's what they're trying to do before the Olympics. And as Ali Gaitan talked about, more prep. They only are playing boys' teams right now. They need to play the top teams like the United States, and they need to have games in Colombia to make their own country aware of how good they've become. Here they have to defend a free kick. The yellow card's out. That so was a tackle from behind, and I think it's a, the right yellow card. Velasquez gets that one. Free kick here for the U.S., and Ali Long's going to step up to take it. Murphy says, wait for the whistle. Again, Horan and Lloyd. Up for grabs, it's off done. The shot taken is deflected wide of Perez. It's a corner for the U.S. The entire practice yesterday for Colombia was set pieces. They know how good the United States are. And they worked on marking. They had corner kick after corner kick, free kick after free kick. Can they defend the U.S.? And Johnston now has come forward, another challenge for Colombia. Tobin Heath drives it to the middle. Never got there. Heath will have another go at it. Two players get tangled up, and it's going against the U.S. Columbia's ball, 20th minute, zeros on the scoreboard from East Hartford, Connecticut. Velasquez will take her time with this. Halfway line area. Usme, try to leave it off, Rincon. Try to combine high up the field. It's coming back on this left side. Santos. With help from Rincon. Here's Ospina. Firing the shot, but Solo is down to get it. It's interesting. They watered the field in this weather. And I've seen a couple of players, especially from the United States, slipping. It has to, it's so cold, it might even be like ice down there right now. Horan leaves it. That was the best attack by Columbia. You can see they have players that can get a shot off quickly and it can be dangerous. They just need to be smarter with their shots. They're not going to beat a goalkeeper like Hope Solo from that long of range. Yeah, but they're going to use the icy surface to skip it by him. Yeah. Columbia will have a throw in. Far side of the stadium. That long throw. The U.S. trying to win it back. Klingenberg is over on that side. It comes back. Sarabun. Back to Hope Solo. Now one of the combinations that Joe wanted to see was balls into a forward and then being played off to either Horan or Lloyd and create that combination. Maybe the next pass is a through ball to get somebody in. When Carly Lloyd needs to touch the ball a little bit more, she's she's getting lost. They're not really finding her quite yet. When they do find her, though, it's very dangerous, and she needs to just make herself more present in that midfield. Carly Lloyd brings it into the middle. Pushed it ahead. That's picked off. Well read, and then hard challenge. Play continues. Another challenge, but this time it's called a foul. It's a free kick here for Colombia. Sent along by Arias. 
And this one should roll out. Time for us to go downstairs. Jenny Taft has a special guest, Kyrie Shelton from New York City FC and a member of our U.S. national team pool. Jenny. JP, thanks. Well, Kyrie, thanks for making the trip to come uh, hang out and watch some soccer. What are your impressions so far of the match tonight? What do you think? Uh, the women have started off well. Uh, I'm very excited to see young players like Mal Pugh out there, you know, getting a start. I'm um, excited for her and the big career ahead of her. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be here and I'm looking forward to the rest of the match. All right, well, a big weekend for you as well. You've got Chicago Fire and FS1. What can we expect to see in that match? Oh, it's going to be a great match. Uh, Chicago Fire is a great team. Um, but we're going to, I hope there's a lot of fans out there and I hope for uh, the best, you know. Um, I'm hoping that we pull away with a win, of course, you know. As being a competitor, um, that's what I uh, expect and hope for, so. Appreciate your time. Enjoy this game and stay warm. Thank you, you too. <laughs> JP? Thank you, Jen. This week, MLS Soccer Sunday returns with a doubleheader. New York City FC taking on the Chicago Fire and then the LA Galaxy battle the reigning MLS Cup champion Portland Timbers. It all starts at 7 Eastern, only on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Dunn was after that ball. It falls to Lloyd. The Heath pass, done. Bringing it back, O'Hara. Ali Long, pressured by Usme. Towards Lloyd. And Columbia will just let it go out for a goal kick. That was a lot of touches, but it didn't get the U.S. anywhere. Yeah, well, Columbia staying cohesive defensively. They're very disciplined. So you saw Ali Long change the point. Well, maybe Klingenberg on that side, instead of playing down that side, let's change it again back to this side, try to break down some of that cohesiveness. You're right. They're not getting drawn out too wide. They're forcing the United States to make something happen, and they're not allowing for a lot of holes for the United States to penetrate through. They've just been very smart with how they're defending and the United States just has to play a little bit quicker and be, like you said a lot, Tony, a little bit more patient. Heath. She's the one that's been so effective. In for Dunn. She tried to play it back and that's blocked. Tobin Heath looks like, to me anyway, Kat, a more confident player with each game. She's been excellent so far in this game. She has been the player right now that's trying to connect the midfield and the forwards, and they're just not finding where she's going with the ball. She's magical when she has it, though, and the runs just need to be a little bit better. They're reacting rather than anticipating. Yeah, I spoke to Jill Ellis, and I said, Jill, Tobin, you've done a great job with Tobin Heath. She's playing the best soccer of her career, and she agreed that Tobin has, has really been playing well. For more on Tobin Heath, Jenny Taft. Well, Tobin said recently that she's always tried to be a flexible player. She wants to play any role that's asked of her. And just like Tony said, I mean, Jill Ellis is really liking what she's seeing, and she thinks she's in a great place. She said, if you talk about output, she's been amazing. The tempo of her game and the vision she's had, she's also scoring goals. So she's been very purposeful with the way she's played. Two World Cups, two Olympics for Tobin Heath. And at one time, a good player more off the bench now a regular in the starting 11. Dunn's pass ahead. U.S. on the break. In for Heath. The shot taken is blocked. O'Hara into the middle for Heath. That's blocked as well. Here's Lloyd. Looking to free herself up for that shot. It's a pass instead. Dunn flips in. Dunn with a goal. And the U.S. has a one to nothing lead. Well, this is just excellent from the United States. Individual effort and connecting well. Mallory Pugh is so good running with the ball. She finds the right person in Tobin Heath. Tobin Heath tries to get the shot on and they find her again. And just Columbia is unable to clear the ball. And then Crystal Dunn does her magic in front of goal and finishes it with class. Well, right there you saw all the attacking personalities for the USA get a touch. Great ball by Mallory Pugh and a really good pass by Carly Lloyd. That's something that I think can improve her game a little bit. And 
And they, again, Crystal Dunn is so good in those tight spaces. Quick turn, puts it away. 12th international goal for Crystal Dunn. And they've all come over this last stretch. Over 13 games, and this one's not done yet. So let's see what that does to the game now. Colombia has played pretty well to this point. How do they react? Well, they need to keep the same game plan. They've done a nice job of staying together defensively, being smart when they attack and how many numbers that they go forward. This team doesn't seem to get affected by a goal. And that's how they need to remain. The key, though, now is who's going to step up as a leader and talk to this team and calm them down. Espina, one of their leaders going forward. It's cut off. It's Horan who made the play. Klingenberg on it on the left. Pushing it ahead. Crystal Dunn moving it for Lloyd. Wide open is Heath. Lloyd spots her. O'Hara makes a run in support. Heath drives it at goal. It's bobbled. It was spilled right in front. No one close enough for the U.S. Horan is able to get to it. No flag. Pushed across. Intended for Lloyd, although Horan looked like she was going to cut that one off. U.S. back on the ball, not for long. Out of play. Huge edge in possession here for the United States, as we might have expected. But even with the 70%, a couple of minutes ago, it was a scoreless game. Well, the USA has definitely been better in the attacking part of the field, and you saw it again there. And Klingenberg on the flank looking for Carly Lloyd who got back post. She's so dangerous back post. But the USA, I really like the way they're defending and how quickly they're double teaming to win the ball back. In the game in the World Cup, that was one thing they didn't do well. And Carly Lloyd spoke about bringing that American mentality and pressing high up the field. And you're right, Tony, they've done well today in doing that and defending all over the place. Owens well wide of Hope Solo, who will have a goal kick. Here in the 30th minute, Crystal Dunn with a goal. In the 27th minute, her 12th international goal. On the outside looking in at the last World Cup, the Olympics, the only thing to be determined is, does she start or does she come off the bench? And she'll have a lot to say, I would think, about that by her performance. Sauerbrot. Back for Solo. Julie Johnston. Still USA's ball. On a Klingenberg throwing. In for Ali Long. Teammates this year with Portland in the NWSL. High up the field went Sauerbrunn. And then a clip there. It's going to result in the foul. It's your very commits it. We talked about O'Hara and Krieger. O'Hara is a forward for most of her career. You can see how comfortable she is when she gets in to the attacking parts of the game. I think that's giving her a little bit of an edge in Jill Ellis' mind. Tobin Heath over the ball. Klingenberg. Done. Turning. From the far side, it's driven in. And there's a second goal. Hallie Long makes it 2 0 US. When you want to make, make an impression on, on the coach, Cat, score a goal, that's always a good way to do it. But I like the build up again. The ball went from Crystal Dunn out to the flank. Lindsey Horan put in a really good ball and it was finished by Allie Long. This ball right here by Dunn. Moran takes it to her right foot, serves it, and Allie Long gets on the end of it. What well, smart runs from Allie Long. She was offside and then 
wanting to get back onside, knowing where the defenders were, getting in that position in front of the defender, and making sure, sure she finished it. And she finished it extremely well, putting it far post. So first international goal gives the USA a two to nothing lead. So a good start for Long as well as the USA now with Dunn on the ball. Frees herself up in the middle. Sauerbrunn. Lloyd. Heath. A lot of bodies in there. Lloyd. A cutting ball through. 3 0. If flag stayed down and it did. Mallory Pugh came slicing through. And things are getting worse for Columbia. And this is the development of Carly Lloyd's game. She just keeps getting better. Last year, she would have taken a shot here, but instead she sees a brilliant run from Mallory Pugh, perfectly timed. And then Mallory Pugh, at such a young age, has the class to look up and finish it right where she needs to and right over the goalkeeper's leg. That's two assists for Carly Lloyd, but what I like here from Mallory Pugh is she didn't start the game well, and she kept working and found the game. She's now factored in to both goals scoring one, uh, two of the three goals scoring one of them. Her second international goal. Good awareness in the field. You, you saw her making that run. She read the play well. Pugh, like O'Hara, sixth start in the last seven games for this team. So at one time, people were saying, would she make the team? I don't hear that question anymore for the Olympics. I don't hear it at all. She has made such an impact on this team, and she's been so impressive, not just to Jill Ellis, but to a lot of the players. They talk about her in training, how good she is, and how she'll carve up the players on the United States team and just make them look bad. That's how good she is. She came in at such a young age, but she doesn't seem like she's 17. No, Yo, she's, she's clean technically, and she sees the game well. She's very good in the attacking part of the field, which is the hardest place to make good decisions. For more on Mallory, Jen, what do you have? Well, JP, yesterday when we talked to Carly Lloyd about Mallory Pugh, she kind of laughed with us and she said, boy, I was a late bloomer when you consider Mallory Pugh is 17 years old. But what's impressed her so much about the way she plays, she said it's the youth system. They have taught her so well. They've prepared her for this. And Mallory at 17, she's already seasoned. She's a young player, goes out. She's having fun creating and she plays freely. And she was the youngest to play in an Olympic qualifier. Could be the youngest to play in an Olympic for the USA. Could be the all-time caps before the age of 18. And there are some very interesting names in front of her. Ospina on the chase. So all of a sudden from a scoreless game, it is three goals in about six minutes time for the United States. <laughs> Looking a little bit more crisp in the attack, the U.S. Better on the finish. They're crisp and Colombia's tired. This is what happens when you don't play consistently and you don't play games consistently. You're just not 90 minutes fit. And it's been obvious just in these 35 minutes. But, the, but I think the key point is the USA is playing well. We've seen them win games when it was very unconvincing. But here, they just look a different team than we saw at this time last year. Long sends it through on a bounce. Perez will just hang on to this. Ali Long already with her first international goal in her first start and first game, in fact, since 2014. One of the newcomers to this squad. Position still up for grabs for the upcoming Olympics, but really not many. Two, maybe three. Well, Joe Ellis talked about the lack of depth in the center midfield position. That's why she brought in Allie Long. And Allie Long has really made a statement so far in this game. Dunn trying to push that one through. It's going to be a goal kick for Columbia. Yeah, and Kat, that, this is the lesson for all the young players out there. You can say, well, because Allie would say to me, Jill isn't bringing me in. I said, Allie, the only thing you can do is keep hounding her, but you got to be ready when you get your chance. You got to be 100% fit, 100% played in, and she's done that. And she's look, she looks good because Columbia is not an easy team to play against. It's not a CONCACAF team. 
These kids are savvy players out there, and she's looked good in the center of midfield. O'Hara almost lost it there to Santos, and now the foul is given. Columbia's ball. Free kick from long distance. Velasquez. 38th minute, USA up by a 3 to nothing score over Colombia. Driven high over Hope Solo by Lady Espria. Solo plays it short, Johnston. the middle alley long toe poking get ahead for crystal dunn here's lloyd horan makes a run in support as do others pew on one side heath on the other cut inside for dunn pew across lloyd goal for nothing us Well, Carly Lloyd had a sharp assist for Mallory Pugh, and she's just returned the favor. She got the ball here on the flank. She ends up with it, kind of a misplay here, but she ends up with the ball. And then watch her beat the last player, and she finds that seam. Carly Lloyd knows what to do with the ball when she gets the ball on that part of the field, for sure. Well, it was a breakaway speed that Carly Lloyd had. She came from behind and beat the defender because of the acceleration. And there is no chance for Velasquez to stay with Carly Lloyd once she got that head of steam when a quality finish from Lloyd. 87th career international goal for Carly Lloyd. Her 24th in the last 23 games. She had gone uncharacteristically quiet without a goal in the last four games. So that drought is over. Well, she told us that she's mentally refreshed, that she's finally had time to feel as though she's fully herself. She's been back in the NWSL with Houston Dash. She finds herself training properly, and you can tell it. Tony Heath, cross inside, one flick. Columbia can't move it out. Horan up the middle for Dunn. It almost fell to her. Santos. Across the way. Deflected back, and the U.S. gets it again. Gun shakes off one defender, Horan. That's good center forward play by Crystal Dunn. Remember, most of her career, she's been a defender. Johnston. Pushing it up. Free kick here for the U.S. U.S. plays it quick. Done from Lloyd. Done dribbling. Try to play it across. Pew across the way. Gave that up. She had a chance to shoot that one herself. Be a throw in for the U.S. But Kat, you gotta love the way that the USA is finding those little seams in and around the penalty area. Really unselfish play, and they're just very dangerous by doing it. The pockets have really opened up in the attacking third. Colombia can't stay with the US, but the runs have just been so smart from the United States. Of course, Colombia, and they're just blasting that ball out for a throw in. This left flank kept in play, right by the corner flank. Another USA throw in, Klingenberg on that side. For Dunn, thought that ball was out. Ruled in and then it stopped by the goalkeeper Perez. Well, we know how cold it is here. What's the field like, Jenny? You're closer. 
Hey guys, thanks. I have been kind of touching the pitch. I went out and walked around a little bit. I also talked to the equipment manager on the U.S. team. He said some of the players have gone to the stud cleat. It doesn't feel too slippery at the moment, but they were watering the pitch till minutes before the players came out. So it appeared as if it was frozen, and that extra water really has made a difference in the slipperiness tonight. Thanks, Jen. Kat, you and I were wondering why they were doing that in the first place, but we don't have grounds crew experience. We were definitely so. wondering. They did it before warm-up, and then they did it after warm-up. Mm. It was completely unnecessary, and you can tell it's affected the player's footing out there. Horan will move it back. I mean, normally in April you can do that, but this is not a normal April day, even in Connecticut. Johnston upfield. Some holding there. Spria comes away with the ball. Who's made? Try to find Rincon. Santos. Ball is lost. Dunn drops it back for Horan. Now to Connie Lloyd. Early ball ahead. Dunn. She was triple teamed there in the circle. She comes away with the ball. And gets the foul as well. And that's what Jill Ellis loves about her. She's so scrappy in that part of the field. U.S. with a big 4-0 lead over Columbia. Final moments of this opening half of play. 44th minute. In for Usme. She's got it forward. Coming back to goal for Solo. Who clips it out of play. Quick throw in for Columbia. Didn't get the foul there. That would have set up an interesting free kick from fairly close range. It's back for Solo. You're right, JP, because Gaetan can hit him. We were watching her in practice. Velasquez. Ken, let's start with you. Get your thoughts in the first half. It's been a clinic by the United States. They started out slow, not finding the chemistry in the front six. But now, the way that they've been making their runs, they've been interchanging. The midfield has gone up front. The forwards have come in to the midfield. It's just been so difficult for Columbia to stay with them and know where every player is from the United States, and that's why they're up 4-0. Tony, first 44-plus. Yeah, I think it's been a good offensive display, but it's also been a very good defensive display. They're recovering quickly after they lose the ball. They're winning it back quickly. Because Columbia is not a bad team. They're a better than a CONCACAF team, but it's it's not making any difference for the USA today. Coming up at the half, we'll send it back to our LA studios to Rob, Karina, Ali, and Leslie for all of the first half highlights and their analysis. That's coming up soon. A minute of stoppage added on here. Carly Lloyd, both a playmaker and scorer in this one. Good possession there with the ball and was able to keep it moving on the left pew inside cuts it back she always has that head up always looks to bring that ball back either across the mouth of goal or cut back inside to someone breaking back on the left side for Columbia less than a half minute to play in this first half Velazquez knocked off the ball foul on the US This is probably going to be the last kick of the first half. Orianica Velasquez stopped the ball from going in early in the game on a U.S. attempt. And then was yellow carded later. She'll launch this one up. Second ball down. Oh, a pass. The minute of stoppage as Ospina takes it. Wide right, nowhere to go. Out for a goal kick, and that is going to do it. Officially ending this first half of play, Crystal Dunn has joined three other players with goals in this opening half of play. So four different individuals have scored goals in the first half, including Ali Long's 